Hello, this is Michael on YouTube, Guitar Tutorials on YouTube, and we're going to get started on the tutorial for the Fly. This is the Boston version of the Fly from the Elevation Tour. I've already done the cover in part one. This is part, this is part two. And in part two here, we're going to go through a quick overview of the tones in each of my presets. I will also do a separate video that covers all the details of each preset. I use two pre presets on the Axe FX2, uh, but the second preset actually is four in one because I use the scenes to change the effects on and off. I use the first preset for the shimmer and, uh, and a clean guitar. So the first part of the song, the intro of the song, where Edge uh, is playing uh, this. That is just clean guitar on the neck position. I believe it's neck anyway, that's how I like it. It gives it that nice woody, darker tone. Uh, and then I, after that intro, I switch to the bridge pup. Let's go through the basics of this tone. I'm just gonna turn the delay off. There's a little bit of delay in here. And I'm gonna turn the shimmer off also. So here is the core tone to my guitar. This is with the effects off, just a little bit of reverb, AC30 model in the Axe FX2 and a Gibson Les Paul guitar, and I'm in uh, neck position. The intro is in neck, but I'm gonna show you neck and bridge so you can hear both. And I'm doing this so you can compare your guitar setup to this one's, because if you get the bass core tone right, uh, or closer to this, then when you layer the effects on top of it, you get closer to the ultimate core tone of the song. The real key with the Edge usually is the AC30, mo AC30 tone and the guitar and the type of pups. So you can use, a, you don't have to use Les Paul, you can use a different guitar that has different, as long as it has probably a humbucker for this song. Uh, Edge does play this on the 360 tour version and the quote normal version of the song, The Fly, uh, is on a Strat, he plays quite often, but in the Elevation tour he used a Les Paul, gives it a much bigger, heavier tone. So let me turn off the mic and here's what the guitar sounds like in an AC30, straight out, no effects, in neck position. Okay, now we're gonna go to bridge position and you're gonna hear much higher treble-like treble tone. I go to this uh, bridge pop right after the intro. So let's go to the bridge. Okay, so that's the bass core tone of the Les Paul into the Axe model. Um, now let's go back to the Brit, the uh, neck pup, and now I'm going to turn on the first effect, um, which is the shimmer. And there's also a little bit of delay in here. You can hear it. Now, the shimmer is pretty complicated from the standpoint I'm using a number of different effects. I'm doing a basic shimmer with a multi-delay and actually with crystals in parallel. That's going into a re uh, reverb and the reverb is smoothing it out. It's this, Edge uses in many songs like uh, All I Want Is You and some other tunes, he uses a very smooth shimmer. What I had to do was 
not put as much reverb on the shimmer to make it not as smooth so that there were some crystal type effects in there uh, because what you know, I wanted to do was get some motion into the shimmer meaning those little crystal type artifacts end up being manipulated by a phaser, a flanger, and a rotary. So I took a phaser, a flanger, and a rotary, and I put those at, right in the shimmer chain, right after the shimmer. The shimmer's got some crystals in it. So when the crystals come through the flanger, it makes the crystals go, that, make that swooshing sound. And same with the phaser and the rotary, it starts to give a movement to it. And what I did was I changed the parameters within the flanger and the uh, phaser and the rotary, I changed the parameters such as the rate of the, the rate for the movement changes with an LFO. So I'm using a LFO, or one of the frequency oscillators of the axe, to actually automatically change the rate at which the flanger is going. So not only is it change, it's not changing at a constant rate, the rate at which the flanger is going is going fast and then slow and then fast and then slow and you get a real ethereal movement type of sound. All I did was experiment over and over and over until I got it and it really worked well. So it's shimmer with some crystal artifacts that aren't perfectly smooth put into a flanger, a phaser and rotary and all those effects are, have their parameters constantly changing to give that swishing movement sound. So when you turn it on, it sounds really cool. It sounds like this. I'm going to turn off the mic. So we've got the bass tone, we've got the shimmer preset, and it does have a dotted eighth note delay in there. It's in parallel with the shimmer. So you can hear, this song by the way is at a tempo of 109 BPM, at least that's what I played it at. And so the delay in this shimmer preset, what do we got? It looks like it's 413 milliseconds, it's a dotted eighth. Let me turn that delay back on. Now, I'm going to um, turn off the delay, and when I turn off the delay, I have the delay set such that it's going to bypass that one main guitar tr uh, path, and essentially only the shimmer is going to be on. So now I'm going to play with only shimmer. Okay, here. Okay, the delay just went off. That path is gone, so you're only going through shimmer. Here's what it sounds like. It won't sound the same because you don't have the parallel path of the guitar without the shimmer. And there you go. That's what the uh, just the shimmer sounds like. This is your shimmer path. Uh, when you add back in the main parallel path of guitar with some delay in it, you get the you get the uh, full sound, full tone, and full effect. Okay, now let's move on to the next preset. So, 
After that, he goes into the big main riff. And this goes now down to the bridge pop. And um, this is essentially just distortion and delay. It's just a drive model that I chose on the X that I thought was close to getting the tone for the elevation version of the song. It's a doubted eighth note delay at 413 milliseconds. It's got a lot of repeat, a lot of mix in there. And it sounds like this. Turn off the mic. And when you play the riff on timing with the delay, you get this. Okay, so we have our bass core riff with the delay and the distortion. That distortion's got a real lot of, lot of mids, a lot of wah in it. There's no wah pedal there on this preset, but there is a lot of uh, high boosted mids in that particular type of distortion. So after the main riff, the tone changes. Um, there's a spot after the verse and chorus, I think. He goes into this little bridge part and a slide of the string on the uh, D string. Uh, what I do is I boost the distortion a lot more. I do a, basically the same drive, but a lot more. Uh, the drive setting is up on that drive, and then I also uh, put in a heavier delay. It's essentially the same as the preset we just reviewed, the same main riff preset, but it's heavier and a little more delay. And it sounds like this. Okay, so there's a heavier distortion, a little more heavier delay for that part. And then he goes back to the main riff. Later on for the lead, and I believe I also used that preset right there for the lead solo. However, the lead solo also has a, a wah in it. He turns on a wah pedal and he's moving the wah pedal. Um, I decided to be lazy and I did not use a wah pedal. What I did is used a wah effect in the XFX and I used the frequency oscillator in the X to move the pedal at the correct rate for me. It's really cool. So let me go to that next preset. Uh, I'm going to go to the third one here. Really this is the now fourth preset. We did the one preset and then this is the second preset but it has four different settings in this preset. The first one is the main riff, the second one is the heavier riff that I just did. This is the third one which is for the lead which has the wah in it. Now you can hear it, hear the oscillator. Okay, that oscillator is moving at a certain rate. And I'll go through all that later, but I've essentially, that's the rate I determined that Edge is approximately using, and it's tied to the BPM of, uh, of the axe. So it's as if I'm moving my pet, my the pedal of the wah at that exact rate. I can't really mess it up while I'm playing. Well, what this sounds like is this. So there you go. Those are the main presets and tones that I use for the song. You've got the shimmer. You got this main one. You've got the next one, which is heavier for this part.
And then you have the lead with the wah. And actually you have the lead with the wah and without the wah. So this is actually uh, this preset that I have with the wah on. I also use, I turn off the wah when I'm playing some of the other parts of the lead. And actually if I turn off the wah, just the wah effect in the same preset, there you go. So I use um, that without the wah for some of the parts. Uh, there's some parts where Edge uses the wah and some where he doesn't. And we'll go through all that in a future tutorial. But I just wanted to point out some of the nuances in some of these presets. We will be turning on an awful lot of effects during um, this song. Uh, it's pretty rich with all the preset changes. Kind of cool though. Get a lot of really neat tunes out of, uh, tones out of this. We'll move on now and start to do the tutorial. We'll move on to part three. And in part three we'll show you the picking pattern, the basic picking pattern for the intro. Thanks for watching. More to come.